welcome to Intro Psych Sessions, the second season where I will rethink my entire Intro Psych course from beginning to end, asking friends and experts to help me figure out how to put it together in a way that implements recommendations and integrates the skills and knowledge that I want to give to my students. And who better to join me on this adventure, co-hosting the series with me, than Dr. Regan A.R. Guram. This is Intro Psych Sessions, Season 2, and I hope that these conversations will help you as you think about your students and your own intro course. Let's get to it. And now, a word from our sponsor. Endless distractions, overbooked schedules, information overload. Students face so many barriers to being fully engaged with their schoolwork. That's why Macmillan Learning's Achieve for Psychology gives you the tools you need to keep them focused on your course, before, during, and after class. Whether it's the exclusive author-created content, captivating footage in our introductory psychology video collection, or the self-evaluation of our goal-setting and reflection surveys, Achieve helps students stay focused on the course and makes it easy for them to tell you when they need extra help. See for yourself. Go to MacmillanLearning.com slash Psych Sessions 2023 special for an introductory tour today. Macmillan's Achieve for Psychology, engaging every student, supporting every instructor, setting the new standard for teaching and learning. Well, uh, Susan, before you take off to Australia for a semester, I know I just time dated this, uh, time stamped this episode, but... Uh, thank you for taking 30 minutes to sit down with Regan and me, and um, we are going to talk about intro psych, kind of post APA IPI. I know that you have um, you're a textbook author, so you've been thinking about intro psych for a long time. Um, but uh, this isn't about you. This is, uh, as we told Noland earlier, this is all about me. <laughs> Um, Excellent. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for inviting me to come talk about you, Garth. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and so, Regan, I don't know. It's been a while since we talked to a guest, um, but we're going to do these chronologically. Uh, do you do you recall where we're sort of at with kind of the 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 rebuilding of my course, or what? What are you thinking about? What what things well, stand know, out to you? I think the you know it's sort of like a, a story so far uh, in a way is I mean I like the you know and, and for those of you remembering the the great intro to the series you know Garth has blown up his course you know and uh, and I should also add and Susan if you didn't know this uh, Garth was in my book at least one of the unique instructors of intro psych anyway because he taught his entire course using interteaching which I salute because it sounds like a heck of a lot of work. Um, um, and, you know, I thought that was blown up as it is, but he's blowing it up even more. And uh, he's got some really neat innovations and he has put new things into place. And one of the things that in these conversations that we have helped, we have been, we as in you know, our guests and I have been helping Garth deal with is, is his, is his redesign trying to do too much? is you know that was a very recent issue that came up is is it is he trying to do too much um uh and more importantly i think you know, big, given the big goals that he has of truly getting all types of students especially those who may not be fully prepared for college you know leveling that playing field are his new innovations going to do the trick uh and i think one of the really neat places to jump in and talk about is is some of those new innovations you know uh i i don't think it's spilling the beans to say that he originally planned to do something every week and one of our recent conversations made him rethink his every week plan and i think getting your take on on that would be would be pretty neat. So yeah. what I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to say, Garth. I think that that was one of the that's one of the most innovative things where you looked at the IPI push for skills and you designed this specific type of exercise to get people to do it. And maybe if you could sketch that out and and Susan, you know, give us your gut reaction. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, okay. So by the way, I think every person who we invite into here uh has something really unique that i want to pick their brain about so i do want to leave time to pick your brain about a couple of things specifically 
But R- Regan, your summary was unbelievable. You must be a great listener. I, I, you know, <laughs> uh, your spouse must really appreciate that sometimes. Uh, I know I do. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he did a really nice job. One of the conversations as I was, it's been a week or two, a couple of weeks since we've talked to someone uh, on this, uh, in this format. But one of the conversations I went back to, one of the important ones was our conversation with Jane Howland. And that's where he's talking about where they determined with assessment, I was trying to do too much. Still, after letting go of so much stuff, I was still trying to do too much. Could I just ask you, Susan, in a class like Intro Psych, mm-hmm. where, how do you think about assessment. And this will be, I think this is going to be kind of a litmus test for me of like, am I on the right track? And you can kind of just take that wherever you want to go. Yeah. Are you talking about assessment in terms of student learning outcomes within the course? Or are you talking about assessment of the course at a program level? No, assessment of the student learning outcomes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, intro is one of my favorite classes to teach. Um, but we at Seton Hall University, um, most of our classes are small, but intro is one of the ones that we teach as a double. Um, so it, it counts as two classes for the professor, but we can have, say, 120 students as opposed to the 18 to 35 in our other classes. So I have to think very carefully about what I do. Um, skills has long been something that I have prioritized, and I loved seeing the IPI come out um, with uh, a sort of a format to cut back on content and do more about skills. So you know, I I do, um, and I, I know some of our colleagues would blast me for this, but I do use. Um, multiple choice exams. I also um, do um, adaptive quizzing, the the learning curve that Macmillan has before each chapter and the online quizzes after each chapter, um, very low stakes, particularly for the learning curve. Um, but the students, that's one of the number one things they like about the course. At first, they hate that they're doing it and they can skip X number of them, but sure. they hate it at first, but then they end up loving it because it it, it forces them to get going. But I always do um, some other activities, sometimes for low stakes credit um, to make grading possible and sometimes uh, extra credit um, that get students into a skills groove. And one of them is pick something that you find really interesting from you know the research you've learned about in this course and create an infographic for a younger audience of your choice. So you're translating the science. In the intro class, I don't make them get anything but the textbook as their source. Um, in upper level classes, when I do that, I, I, I make them get other sources as well. Um, but they find it both um, challenging because I'll say, okay, this is for this is for first graders. Okay, find a first grader. And um hmm. And they find it fun and they put a lot of, of effort into it. So that's an example of the kind of um, skills-based, uh, I want you to be able to translate the science for another audience. And I want you to be able to, at the same time, um, understand it well enough that you can maybe even apply it to your own, your own life in ways that are not directly related to psychology. Well, ding, 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 ding. Uh, <laughs> a lot of where I'm going, you've you've already talked about it. So um uh, you know, which is, am, which is great. Yeah. Which is, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's reliability or whatever. So, um, I am the translating uh, psychological mm-hmm. science, I think is a big piece that I want to start making a really, um, uh, intentional effort, um, um, of getting my students to do. Um, I do have a question about, and, and Regan, Regan, have you used post-testing? Uh, so, so Susan sounds like she does a pre, some pre-test, multiple choice pre-testing, which I do too, Susan. I think it's a great right. idea to get students just get them into the book, low stakes. Great. Um, yeah, there's and, no grade. You just get credit for doing it. That's right. And uh, to your point, publishers have really great systems now that are completely customizable and probably OER yeah. is kind of coming that way too, Regan, right? So, but, but the question Regan is, uh, uh, post, post-testing after learning, um, so pre-test, post-test, I, I know from assessment perspective, that's kind of tempting, right? Um, from like a, like a, scholar, a scholarly um, research perspective. Well, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, and you know, when you say post-test, are you meaning, you know, there are many ways to interpret that. I mean, I do a pre and post in terms of uh, APA learning outcomes. So for example, uh, everybody in intro psych uh, receives the APA learning outcomes at the beginning of the course and at the end of the course, and then they indicate the extent to which they believe they've accomplished it. So yes. uh, this is actually modeled on uh, a couple of the, the published articles that the APA IPI put out. Uh, and I just modified those and I use those 
is pre and post of my class. And, uh, you know, the, the simple measure right there for me is, good Lord, I really hope that by the end of the class, yeah. I am moving the needle on the extent to which they believe they are confident about these outcomes. And, you know, in two years worth of assessments, that is the case. It is moving very nicely yeah. now. So that's the main type of pre post that I do. Mm -hmm. um, similar to Susan, I also do a pre test and, and instead of a post test and guard, this is, this is where the interpretation may be different in terms of a post test. I very much lean on uh, mastery, uh, mastery testing where I give them quizzes uh, and they they can take uh, they can take it multiple times, and I give them their best score. So there's that. There's no none of my quizzes other than none of my assessments other than the exam are one shot. So the exam is one shot. Yes, you take it. That's your score. Uh, but pre tests, quizzes uh, are all developmental, where you can keep taking it. And I've been sort of playing with the the specification grading idea, where uh, I do have them right. And mind you, similar to Susan, my classes are large. Uh, taught it you know up to 400 students uh, last term was 400 uh they they write seven different essays now i will tell you and you know this quasi do you have teaching assistance yes so oh. i i do have teaching assistance i give them a rubric to grade it uh, um now I will say that I, I'm I'm taking a close look at both my rubric and my instructions given Chat GPT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, if you're curious, I'll say right now my plan on addressing Chat GPT is talking to the students about what the intent of the writing assignment is, you know, and and that's one of the best suggestions that have come out so far is be clear about what the assignment is set to do, right. and point out that. Chat GPT is not going to do it for them, you know. So anyway, but but I think that's still a developing story. But mm -hmm. uh, really, I think the challenge is, is getting that learning and that thinking in yeah. forms other than multiple choice. You know, I, and I, Susan, I love your sorry. infographic graphic, you know, idea. Yeah. I, I was going to um, just say that I really love your idea of asking them explicitly how much they felt like they learned those APA got, you know, learned or, or gained skills and those um, APA um, learning goals. I, I don't do it explicitly, although now I'm I'm tempted to, to do so. Um, what I do is we are actually required to have the APA learning goals on our syllabi in our department. And then we check off which boxes are likely to be covered in this class. I also have my own um, learning outcomes for the, the course that that grow from those, but they're specific to the course. And then I, I have topic learning objectives throughout. And so at the end of the semester, we spend a whole class, we do a, a, a takeaway assignment and they can um, they can work with somebody or they can do it on their own. Or they can do it actively working um, online with whatever they want to use, or they can, I have handouts. And basically there's a box for each topic and also the major themes of the course. And they have to go through mm -hmm. and do some takeaway that they've learned that they apply to their own lives in some way for each of these boxes. And then they have to identify the uh, the course or topic learning objectives that it ties to, to make them. And we talk about that we're going to be doing this all semester. And it's also really fun because they do it in the classroom yeah. and they um, suggest songs that we play. Um, so <laughs> we have an ongoing playlist of their music suggestions. So it's it's just really fun. And then that becomes like a literal takeaway. This is, you know, this is your thing. And you get credit just for doing it. It's course credit. But, you know, as long as you do something in each of your boxes and list some learning objective in each box, um, you get credit for it. And but I, I really do think it's important to make students explicitly aware of the objectives of the course and of the topics. So, so a really key follow up, um, because, you know, Garth, we talked about and you've talked about and in, in your redesign that there are a lot of different activities, right? Yeah. There are a lot of different things that go together to do the learning. And Susan, I've, I've heard you mention at least twice the they do it, but it's not graded, right? They do it for course credit, but it's not graded. What 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 percent of your intro psych course is doing stuff where if you do it, you get you get the credit? Would you because I'm because I I do a fair amount of that and I like it, but I would say a third. Okay, that's that's a good chunk. Yeah, 
And I, and, and I like that, you know, I like that, but yeah, there's, that's there's like curious. little mini rubrics. So, you know, you, you can't, I mean, you can't completely just cash it in. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you're infographic, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll send it back. I'll be like, no, no, this is not up to par. So it's not like, I'll just literally take anything. Right. But. <laughs> well, yeah. I am. Okay. So First of all, here's what I've been hearing. Uh, one, I love that tilt framework. Framework. I don't know transparency. Yeah. In, uh, learning. I've tilted my big assignments. Exactly. Yeah. So, folks, if you don't know that, go to. Oh, I used to know the the URL, but just tilt higher education or something like that. Google that. It's great. Um, so I, I hear you all saying, uh, "Hey, it's all about clarity. Com- communicate with your students. Make sure they're clear on what they're doing." Susan, I. Um, I, I love that you are, and I agree through these conversations, you're bringing a lot of those learning experiences into the classroom. So you're not having students do it outside. I mean, I'm sure you are having students do some things outside of the classroom, but um, I I am going to this time around start to bring more and more of those activities and the learning and the writing and the collaboration inside the, the classroom, classroom. Mm-hmm. especially with the chat GPT kind of um, challenge that's out there right now. I think it's one way to uh, th- that where we we kind of have a little bit more control of the the learning um, or or the assessment. Um, and so, OK, so I am. Yeah, I, I just that's really, really helpful to hear now. We don't have too much time. And so I want to, I'm going to fire away at you a couple of things because um, I've known you for a long time. I know kind of what you're passionate about, what you give talks about. And, um, and I just, I just want to riff on this stuff for a second. So first of all, intro psych and statistical literacy, misinformation, those kinds of things. Now I know you teach all kinds of different classes at the intro psych level. What's reasonable? Because we had a talk with Dave Myers and we kind of figured that that was one of the most important things. I 100% agree. For students. So can you just riff a little bit on what you think, uh, mm-hmm. how, how much space should that get in the course and, and how should that be done in your opinion? Um, so I think there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I think it's essential to do it and to integrate it throughout the course and not just relegate it to a single topic. Um what I do is I, um, in the beginning of the semester, I start each class with psychology and the news. And I just show some recent things that related to psychology. And it just starts opening the a conversation about where we see this out in the world. So we can start asking these questions about what is um, good information, what is misinformation, and, you know, uh, inadvertently wrong, what is disinformation, um, which is explicitly wrong and what is malinformation, which is with a really evil um, perspective. So we talk about that. But then after a few weeks, it's their turn and everybody can send me a psychology and they have to email it to me old school because I want to have a little email conversation with them, um, an article that they found with a paragraph about how they think it connects to something in the course. And then I then at the beginning of the class, those are the ones that get shared. So it'll be, oh, here's an article connecting this with credit to Garth Neufeld. Or whoever mm-hmm. the student was, yeah. um, and so that puts it in, and and they and they get really excited because I say I don't want it cannot be from a psychology or scientific not scientific American not psychology today. It has to be from another source that you're reading. It can be TikTok, it can be ESPN, it can be Vogue, um, but they have to start looking for that. Go ahead, Garth. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it because I just. I am always, I think sometimes creativity is the thing that holds us back from like being, from going from being good instructors to being great instructors. And one of like, I love this idea of asking students to go out and find it. I think a lot of instructors think I, we still subscribe to that sage on the stage kind of mentality where we are the ones who profess, we give the information, we know it, but putting your my 33 students out there, I am almost certainly going to put this into my course. No, I can't do 33 emails, but I could say to students two times throughout the term, this is what you're required to do is send me something. We'll go over it together. So I don't class. email them in the beginning, Garth. I, they okay. have to email it to me, which then yep. opens the door for me to say, I love this. Oh, that's so interesting that you play soccer and that you resonated with the story of this soccer player you know, having performance awesome. anxiety in a game. So my e- only email is my response to them. 
and then pulling it into a PowerPoint slide. Okay, well, I am stealing that and it is going to weave through my course so that students know that on cer- at the beginning of certain class sessions, we are going to start with some psychology in the news and we're going to talk about misinformation. Yeah. I, I love start it. Every class, every class. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just It's just a couple of minutes. We don't have to, yeah, it's very quick. Uh, I also and that makes can, it apply. Oh, go yeah. ahead. No, I was um, just going to say that makes it so applied and pertinent and fun. Yeah. And it's we're another te- thing that shows up in their evaluations as something they really valued. And think about the skill that offers them going forward to analyze, to like, to. If there's one thing to learn about the way psychologists think or mm-hmm. about the way we do research or the way that we see the world. But now we're asking them to do that. Awesome. 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 Okay. Number two. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to tie this. So I've been working with Jackie Cranny, and that's when I'm in Australia, I'll be working with her at the University of New South Wales. And she talks a lot about this concept of psychological literacy, which I think is kind of an umbrella that a lot of this stuff falls under. And the big piece there is um, not just applying it to your professional life, but also your personal life and also your community locally and globally. And it ties very closely into this idea of global citizenship. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing this spring, we have this international collaboration of undergrad for undergraduate psychology education, ECUPO, um, where we're working on international um, learning outcomes that are are broad and flexible enough, but that really ground themselves in these kinds of skills that we're talking about. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I love it. I, I, and I mean, I think that really ties in nicely with uh, the IPI uh, goals and, and themes. Um, it p- specifically. Those are informing us. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. So second, years ago, Susan, I uh, I learned about um, um, inter- intersection, inter intersex individuals. Yes. And um, that really put me on a path. I have no business teaching gender and sexuality, uh, but I yes, thought- Yes, you do. Well, okay. <laughs> I don't have any formal training at it, right? right. But but when when I started learning about this over a decade ago uh, and with some mentors and, and folks who were, were doing some of this stuff in their class and I had colleagues who were teaching human sexuality, I didn't, there, there was something that triggered in me that just thought, you know, I don't think that 18 year old me didn't know a lot of this stuff. Um, and my students don't know a, a lot um, about kind of g- gender continuums and, and sexual orientation mm-hmm. continuums. And, and I know that this stuff is changing. And, and to be quite honest, I live in one of the more liberal places in the country. And so uh, the way this is going in our school system, I, I don't mean like that this is sometimes it it's hard to know in conversations with parents and all those kinds of things. It's hard to know how to navigate it all depending on where you live and all those kinds of things. But yeah. there is there 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 are some things, there are some gifts I want to give to my students from Intro Psych based on this. Can you just tell me in your opinion, what do you think are some of the most valuable things that we can give to our Intro Psych students regarding gender and sexuality in Intro Psych? So I I think absolutely I'm a I'm a straight uh, cisgender woman. Uh, I lay that out there with my students. So I shouldn't, you know, what right do I have to talk about this? But I feel that um, particularly for those of us who are our allies, it's essential to talk about it. So we're not just leaving it to our colleagues who are gender and sexual minorities. Um, I think two things that I do, one is I ground it in the science because I, I, I'm in a liberal part of the country, but I, I also have a lot of conservative students. I want everybody to feel welcome and comfortable in the classroom. Um, so I ground it in the science and I also let people from those communities do the talking. So I'll use brief video clips. Um, I I don't I don't speak for any community I'm not a member of. But there are also um there's a great um Twitter thread from a biologist about the complexity of binary sex, meaning that it's not. I mean, it's very much grounded in in the science. And I actually just show her Twitter thread and I, I don't try to teach it myself. It, you know, we walk through her Twitter thread and say at the end of that, you know, here, this is why it's so complex. So grounded in the research, let others speak for themselves, but make sure that you're you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's really helpful. And I believe I have seen that thread maybe in your talk, maybe you... it's in my talk. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you, mm-hmm. rem- can you give a shout out to who that is right now? Like whose Twitter feed it is? The um, gosh, it, no. It's, okay. That's fine. Yeah. You know what? Um, we'll, we'll find it. We'll put it in the description, uh, the episode description. Yeah. Um, I'm also very happy to share my slides for that talk. So yeah. if people want them, um, my email is susan.nolan at 
S-H-U dot E-D-U. Feel free to email me and I'll send you a link to a Dropbox where it resides. Thank you so much, Susan. And, um, you know, I know we went we went hard this last 10 minutes on, on a couple big, big <laughs> topics. Um, we didn't even get to my third topic, which was social justice, uh, which I, you know, I, you know, one of the great things about intro psych is that mm-hmm. we get to tailor it to our own passions and values, yeah. right? And um, get to share those things with our students. And so you and I, um, and, and Regan, uh, I think we all share this um, kind yeah. of, um, you know, a couple of things uh, that I've heard today. Um, this this um, idea that individualism uh, as as we you know as we live and breathe in, in the United States is not the way that most of the world uh, mm-hmm. works and lives and that uh, that psychology also has something ought to offer the world globally yeah. and com- at the community level and in families um, yeah. any any final words on that before we wrap up today Susan I'm just, I teach a 1000 level international psychology course where I get to do that very explicitly. I try to pull some of it into <laughs> intro, but when you're doing psychology in the news, you're going to get social justice stuff. It's going to come up very naturally. Yeah. 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 Human well, rights. thank you. Super, yeah. um, Super stuff. Hey, uh, have a great time in Australia. We will miss you. Uh, but you know, now we have Zoom. So I'll see you. We'll just have to work with the time zone. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Thank you Take so care, much for Susan. inviting me. A pleasure to talk with you both. 